Hello everyone. Today we are going to discuss about laboratory diagnosis of parasitic diseases. Laboratory diagnosis play a vital role in the diagnosis of parasitic infection. There are so many diagnostic techniques we are used to diagnose the parasitic infection. Uh, microscopy, microscopy, culture technique, immunodiagnosis, molecular method, intradermal skin test, uh, synodiagnostic technique, animal inoculation, and imaging technique. Let's move. Various morphological forms of the parasites are seen in different specimens. Uh, normally, in the laboratories, uh, uh, we are receiving a stool sample uh, most commonly in parasitological department. So, when we receive the stool sample, we can see the morphological forms such as tropophoid, cyst, adult worms, uh, segments, and the egg. <coughs> So when we consider the trochozoid, we can see the parasite Endamoeba histotica, Giardia lamblia, Palancherium coli, and Trichomonas vagina, uh, hominis. Um, and the, when we consider the cyst stages, again Endamoeba histotica, Giardia lamblia, Palancherium coli, we can see. The adult worm, when we consider it, or the intestinal nematodes, uh, such as Ascaris lumbricoids, Andorobius vermiculari, uh, are the uh, normally very commonly we can see in uh, stool sample. The segments, normally segments we can see in the chest stored uh, parasites, uh, example Stenia solian, Tenia saginatus. X normally in the case of egg. Uh, normally we can see in nematodes, intestinal nematodes, chest toad and trematodes we can see. Example, Cystisomas egg, uh, Tinea species egg, Hymenopis nana, Hymenopis diminuta egg and Ascaris, uh, hookworm, Enterobius vermicularis, Trichura strichura eggs are seen in uh, uh, stool sample. There are two groups of methods used to diagnosis of the parasitical stages, direct method and the indirect method. Direct method normally we are going to demonstrate the parasite or parasitical stages in the specimen. Uh, for example, the presence of trophozoite in Antaniba histotica in the stool of a acute uh, intestinal ambiasis. Uh, next one, the presence of segment of the tapeworm in the specimen. Other one, the parasitical X in the stool sample. That means direct is a method means directly we are identifying or observing or demonstrating the parasitical stages. Uh, but in indirect method, we are going to identify the antibody. Actually, here we are not identify the parasitical stages. Uh, when we infected by any of the parasite uh, or parasitic parasite, uh, that time the, our, anti uh, our body produced the antibody. So by detecting this, we can uh, 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 demonstrate whether the patient have the particular parasite or not. But by using this antibody test, we cannot say whether the patient is acute condition or chronic condition if you want to identify the accurate the acute and the um, chronic condition we have to go for the igm and the igg antibody detection when we are testing just and uh, normally the antibody testing uh, normally by using antibody test we cannot say the ac acute and the chronic conditions <coughs> examination of feces Normally, uh, the stool examination carries out in the two methods, microscopic examination and microscopic examination because these two methods are very important because the, these two methods give lot of information uh, to identify the 
parasite or disease condition. The other thing is the specimen collection. Normally, uh, very common specimen we are receiving in the parasitology laboratory is the stool specimen. So here when we are collecting the stool specimen, we have to consider some important points. First one is the, the collection container. It should be white mouth, clean, leak proof, screw kept container. And this container should not contain any chemical like disinfectant because if we have the if the container containing the disinfection it will kill the uh, parasitical stages especially a uh, living uh, stages like uh, trophozoite or lava and that then other thing uh, the when we collecting the stool sample the stool sample should not uh, uh, mix with the urine sample because urine is the toxic to the some parasitical stages that is especially mortal parasitical stages so it will kill the parasite so we cannot identify the motility and the other important thing the by the motility by we can uh, uh, conclude or guess the parasite right then other thing uh, the specimen should not uh, mix with the soil or sand because sometimes in soils or sands sometimes it may contain the free living parasitical stages uh, so we cannot actually we cannot differentiate uh, uh, the uh, free living to pathogenic st st stages example stromuloid strong when we consider the stromuloid uh, it's contain pathogenic stages and free living stages uh, so if we receive the soil is contaminated with our stool sample for the diagnosis we should differentiate the, the pathogenic one and the free living one so we have to go for another uh, testing to confirm whether it is non uh, free living or pathogenic uh, so if you are avoid this mixing up of uh, the soil and sand directly we know the specimen is okay directly we are getting from the patient so if any parasitical stage is present we can confirm that this is due to the infection then other thing uh, when we are collecting the sample we have to collect the uh, sample from uh, where the blood and mucus is present we have to collect that area uh, and uh, when we are examining also we have to collect the blood mucus containing area because in that area there are a lot of the parasitical stages we can see and if delay you know if we are collecting the stool sample from homes then we have to transport to the laboratory it take some time so now that we have to uh, at the preservatives so we have to consider this thing and other thing the timing uh, when we are collecting the, the samples so we have to collect the sample before the uh, treatment otherwise what happen if we are taking drugs it reduce the parasitical stages right then frequency normally in all the condition parasitological specimen by using single sample we cannot decide the or we cannot report the, the report per negative or positive by using three consecutive sample only we can give the or confirm whether the patient is positive or negative so the examination of the uh, specimen so when after collecting this stool sample we have to test within the uh, 30 minutes to 1 hour if the specimen is liquid one or uh, the watery sample because the watery sample means it contains troposide stages so uh, if you keep long time the, the, the troposoid uh, the, it's a uh, touch with the uh, environment yeah 
the oxygen is the toxic to the troposphere so it will die so in the case of liquid or watery or semi solid stool sample which are contain or highly concentrated troposoid stage so we have to uh, test it uh, test within half an hour to one hour if it is foam sample okay we can keep uh, at room temperature then microscopic examination Microscopical examination here, the after receiving the stool specimen, we are examining the stool sample with the naked eye without using the microscope. By using this uh, uh, step, we can conclude or we can guess the parasitic, parasite and parasitic stages. Uh, first, we have to consider consistency, color, odor, and any other abnormal constituents okay when we consider the consistency um, sometimes uh, consistency mean the contents whether it is watery or semi foam or uh, foam right uh, because the, when we consider uh, the watery specimen here we can see large number of trochosoids when we consider the formed one, the solid one, we, in that samples, we can see large number of cis stages. Actually, in solid uh, stool sample, we cannot see the troposoid stages. Color, normally the stool sample pale yellow color due to the bile secretion. Uh, in some uh, the parasitic infection we can see the colors uh, like uh, blood uh, actually when we take the blood if it is dark or brick color or sometimes uh, the our stool sample get color due to the truck vegetables or food so we have to uh, uh, first we should know the normal stool sample and the abnormal stool samples then order so in some clinical condition especially g idea it's produced bad smell right so normally we have to be, by using that features we can uh, guess the parasite and the mycoid bloody stool sample uh, so in acute condition we can see the blood and mucus uh, normally the mucus, uh, blood and mucus uh, diarrhea uh, caused by amoebae that, that means entamoeba histotica, valentarium coli, trichura strichura and uh, some uh, intestinal cystisomas. So these are the examples of the parasite which are produce uh, blood and mucus uh, stool sample. Uh, sometimes by using the color of the stool sample we can conclude we already discussed if the stool sample is dark red in color that means due to the blood it indicate the upper GIT drug bleeding if it is brick red color it indicate the uh, bleeding from lower GIT drug and for the fail offensive stool that's indicate the Geodiasis. and other thing the microscopical examination uh, we can identify the adult worm like round worm uh, thread worm sometimes we can see the segment of the uh, tape microscopical examination after microscopical observation then we go for the microscopical examination so we will do direct wet mount here we use saline and iodine uh, so here why we use saline and iodine what is the important when we consider the saline wet mount uh, here we use 0.9 percentage of the saline so if any motile stages is present uh, we can identify the motility of the parasitic stages for example the troposoid stages of the amoebae 
Cola made in Tamiba Historica, in Tamiba Dispa, Cola, Balantitian Cola, Giardia, whatever the troposophical stages we can see by using saline. And there we can observe the motility. Right? Uh, for example, when we consider the Entamoeba Historia, it is unidirectional and fast motility. When we consider the Giardia Lundia, it motile like a falling leaf appearance. So by using these features, we can uh, confirm or guess the characteristical stages. Uh, and under saline mode also we can observe the cyst stage and the uh, larval stage adult and the egg also we can observe and other thing in some cases some parasitical eggs are normally brownish color because uh, it's get stained with the bile so example ascaris species uh, and the um, tinea egg, trichurus trichura, hymenopis tibinata. These are the parasitical, the parasitical egg which are normally brownish color due to bile staining. So we can clearly uh, observe this, but other eggs are colorless. Uh, then we will move to iodine uh, wet mount. When we consider the iodine wet mount, here the, why we use iodine, iodine it acts as a temporary stain, so uh, it uh, stain the internal part of the parasitical stages. So we can easily identify the internal part, then it is toxic to the life organism, like lipotroposoid, lava, so it is toxic so it killed the parasite then it is killed so there is no movement so we can see interior part of the parasite so by using that we can identify the species and mainly why we use iron mode mainly we are using for the identification of cyst of the protozoan parasite because protozoan paras uh, parasite cyst are very small size and we cannot identify we can uh, ident we can identify in saline mount but we cannot identify the species if we want to identify the species we have to stain with the id then uh, the internal part especially uh, cyst nucleus get color then we can count the number of say uh, the nuclei so we can confirm that parasitical stages and then species so now we will move this uh, the normal constituent of the uh, stool sample uh, why we want to study the normal constituent because some uh, constituents are it look like uh, the parasitical stages so if you know the normal constituent only we can identify the abnormal or the parasitical stages here when we consider epithelial cell it look like a uh, troposoid stage then pollen gram uh, it look like uh, the, the last cystic cyst or the immature um, amoebae cyst uh, like that the yeast cell when we consider the yeast cell it may confuse with the cryptosporidia so if we know the normal constituent only we can identify then other thing for fungal spores uh, sometimes it you may confuse with the, the cocaidian parasite some cocaidian parasite oocysta look like this then mite egg mite egg when we consider mite egg hookworm eggs also similar morphological features so if you want to differentiate these uh, pathogenic and common or normal constituents you should know that or you have to examine normal one right. say line one we already discussed it is useful to detect the troposoids and the cyst egg and the larval stages and here why we use main purpose of 
ನೀವು ಯೂಸಿಂಗ್ ದ ಸೇಲೈನ್ ಮೌತ್ ಈಸ್ ಅಬ್ಸರ್ವ್ ದ ಮೋರ್ಟಿಲಿಟಿ ಆಫ್ ದ ಟ್ರೋಪಾಸೈಟ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಲಾವರ್ ಸ್ಟೇಜ್ ಇನ್ ಅಕ್ಯೂಟ್ ಇನ್ಫೆಕ್ಷನ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಅದರ್ ಥಿಂಗ್ ಆಲ್ರೆಡಿ ಡಿಸ್ಕಸ್ ದ ಸಮ್ ಎಕ್ಸಾ ಸ್ಟೇನ್ ವಿತ್ ದ ಬೈ ಸೊ ವಿ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಈಸಿಲಿ ಐಡೆಂಟಿಫೈ ದ ಬೈ ಯೂಸಿಂಗ್ ಸೇಲೈನ್ ಮೌಂಟ್ why we use iodine mount here the already we discuss iodine act as a temporary stain so it did penetrate the interior parts and stain the cyst and having in this x lava so we can easily visualize interior part and we can easily identify its species parts the disadvantages of the iodine mount Uh, uh, it kill the parasite so there is no motility so we cannot uh, identify the motility of the parasitical stages and here when we using iodine uh, iodine mom the colorless parasitical egg also get the color uh, so uh, by staining uh, property here actually cannot be appreciated permanent staining right this is the confirmatory stain and the staining procedure uh, for the intestinal protozoan parasite uh, and normally we use the this method the stain permanent staining in uh, parasitology and hematoxin here we can use uh, to identify the old amoebae Uh, flagellate that means giardia lambia palentinium cola we can use then other thing the color of the eye hematoxylin uh, uh, purplish color then trichrome staining when we consider the trichrome staining the color blue uh, and uh, uh, pinkish or magenta color uh, we can identify uh, the old amoebae Uh, amoeba the trophosoid cyst and the uh, giardia lambia trophosoid cyst balancing cola also field stain normally the field stain used to identify the malaria but we also we can use to identify the protozoan parasite another one acid fast uh, staining here uh, the acid fast is stain normally we are used to identify the propidian parasite example filter sporidium pavum isospora belli these are the example to identify the or uh, used to identify the uh, acid fast stain then some in the case of acid fast staining sometimes e cell if the stool sample contain e cell sometimes is it will take a mistakenly for the cyst of the the oocyst of the cryptosporidium right so it should we should differentiate the fungal uh, uh, stages and the cryptosporidium oocyst hello everyone then we will move to preservation of the fecal spe- uh, specimen uh, for the preservation of the fecal specimen normally we are using uh, so many preservatives why we need to use preservative Uh, so here to maintain the morphology of the parasitical stages cyst egg and larva otherwise if you keep long time with after one hour the trophozoite start to destroy and if you keep more than that sometimes larval stage uh, become uh, will de- die uh, sometimes egg stages may be uh, change into another form right so to prevent the further development of helminthes egg and larva here example the cocoon egg if you are keeping more than 5 hours so sometimes the uh, egg become a larval stage 
quite uh, rapidity form lava. If you keep further, the rapidity form lava become a heliform lava. Right? Uh, other thing for the teaching purpose. We are, if you are applying the preservative, and we can keep long time for so we can use for the teaching purposes. Then for the epidemiological analysis, we can use and to transport the specimen to the referral laboratory for the further identification. Uh, because if the, the if your referral laboratory is far away from your hospital, so you should send the specimen for the for the uh, identification or for the confirmation if you send without any thing add any adding of the preservative sometimes the morphology will change or sometimes the morphology will uh, the living parasite will die so to prevent this we have to preserve the or we have to add the preservatives so we already discussed we, uh, we are receiving three type of specimen one is water specimen semi solid or foam specimen when we consider the foam stool sample we can store it the room temperature because in here we cannot see any uh, living organism we can only see egg stage or cyst stages when but when we consider the semi solid or water specimen uh, with uh, blood and mucus actually we have to examine without delay um, and uh, here we can see the troposoid stages right or otherwise if you are keeping long time the morphology will change or sometimes larval stages if you are keeping long time it will undergo another larval stage or it will die other thing who form it it will undergo the larval stage so if you uh, if delay uh, is happen to the examination so you should preserve the specimen by refrigeration or by any chemical fixative so there are some chemical fixative we are used commonly in parasitology formerly fixative 5 percentage or 10 percentage this is recommended for the protozoan cystic that means the formalin fixity which preserve the protozoan cyst uh, sodium acetate formalin fixative which are used to maintain the morphology of the parasites and the methylate iodine formalin solution it is act as a fixative and the stain methylate the fixative iodine is the stain temporary stain saudine solution uh, this is preserve the specimen more than one year and polyvinyl alcohol also we can use it's also uh, preserve the stool specimen right here uh, the most common use of preservative or fixatives and their advantages and disadvantages when we consider the formalin the advantages they easy to prepare we can easily prepare and the, we can keep long time and we can um, do the concentration technique if we are preserved this specimen by using formally we can do the concentration technique and we can do the amino acids disadvantages we cannot do the permanent smear and uh, when we consider the troposoid it will destroy so mif uh, preservative if uh, uh, we already discussed it acts as a fixative and the stain so it, this also easy to prepare a long shelf life and this is normally we use for the field study and again by using this specimen we can do the concentration technique these are the advantages disadvantages of mif uh, again we cannot do for the permanent stain when troposoids destroy uh, and it's contain uh, mercury uh, we all know mercury is very uh, 
uh, heavy molecule um, uh, so metals actually metal uh, so disposal problem available and here uh, by MIF uh, preserved specimen we cannot do the amino assay SAF uh, preservative we, it is useful for the concentration technique permanent stain we can do uh, especially iron hemoxylin we can do for the immuno assay kits and we can prepare easily the if we prepare we can keep long time these are the advantages of sodium acetate formally disadvantages adhere poorly to the slide that mean uh, if you are apply preservative if you uh, when you are preparing uh, any permanent stain or something when you are preparing a smear the smear will not attach to the slide so this time you have to use albumin coated slide you have to use and other thing if you are use sodium acetate fixative you cannot uh, stain the trichrome permanent stain and here also troposide will destroy so, saudine fixative uh, fresh stool sample we can preserve by using saudine uh, fixative and uh, it is uh, excellently preserved as stool disadvantages here also uh, it's contain mercury compound and we cannot go for the concentration technique here again the troposoid uh, destroy and we cannot do the amino assay polyvinyl alcohol fixative the advantages uh, by using these polyvinyl alcohol fixative stool sample we can do the trichrome stain the if you prepare polyvinyl alcohol you can keep long time and it's uh, preserved the um, parasitical stages disadvantages which is the preparation difficult and um, this polyvinyl alcohol it is not preserved the giardiasis trichoma uh, richurus egg uh, isospora oocyst stromboloid larval stages again all the troposoid will destroy if you are use pva uh, preservative and again you cannot use for amino assay then it's contain mercury so uh, the, these are the disadvantages when we consider all the pre preservatives the, the main disadvantages is the troposoid will destroy right uh, this is the summary uh, by each and every preservative uh, what are the tests you can go for right next step by using microscopy you can uh, see the table scolex and the segment uh, if you want to identify the table or chest tooth uh, on by using naked eye you can see sometimes some the adult uh, parts especially scolex scolex mean head part of the the table sometimes you can see the segments uh, you can see thank you